Yep, so we go into the local board. So look, um, I'm, if, if that's okay with everybody, I'm going to call uh, our Waitakere Rangers local board uh, members to come up and get them to introduce themselves. Uh, kia ora, Mr Chair and uh, Councillors. Uh, I'm Greg Preston, I'm the Chair of the Local Board. Uh, with me is uh, Sandra Coney and uh, Mark Allen and Kentuna. Uh, great to see everyone. I think we took the chance of having a face-to-face -face meeting, so we thought we'd all come along to engage in the way that we used to meet and uh, I trust everyone as well. Uh, we have a, um, some submissions to make on your agenda item about the Regional Parks Management Plan review and I'll let um, Sandra, who's done a lot of work on this matter, I'll speak to the matter. Um, Sandra, can you get everybody introduce themselves and also with the mic as well? Okay, maybe start with Ken. Yeah, hi, Ken Turner, member, thank you. Uh, kia ora, Mark Allen. Sandra Coney, a member. And greetings to all the um, members of the governing body and the chair, Alf and Mook. Um, and thank you for your lovely words about Barry. Um, I was actually chaired the process by which the last regional parts management plan was um, developed. So I have a particular interest in it. But we just wanted to set out as a board the way in which the Waitaki Rangers Local Board has a very special interest in this um, and our wish to be fully involved in this revision as it goes ahead. The existing plan actually has served us pretty well for the last 10 years, but there are aspects of it that do need updating. Um, can I just, is there a way I can move this forward on the PowerPoint? Okay, we'll go to the next one then. So the plan sets out the um, vision management principles, parks, classification, policies and rules for managing regional parks. We appreciate that the governance of the regional parks sits with the governing body of Auckland Council, but there are particular local boards that have a strong interest. For our board, we have over half the, it is over half the land area of our local board. The park itself in Waitakere is 17,000 hectares, and I see that the report notes that that's over 40% of the regional parks network. The other local boards that are in, in a similar sort of position are the Rodney Local Board, which has 10 or possibly more regional parks, and Franklin, which has the Hunua regional parks. However, there are some aspects of our relationship with the regional parks that differentiate us. Go on to the next one. First of all, the origin of the regional park network lies in the Waitakere Ranges. Um, the nucleus of the regional park network was the Auckland Centennial Memorial Park, which was formed in the Waitakere Ranges. The push for it actually started in 1894. It was finally set in motion in 1939 as to celebrate 100 years of the foundation of the city of Auckland. It was an Auckland City Council um, initiative, but it was supported by all the other territorial local authorities at the time. And then after that, the um, Centennial Memorial Park moved into the Auckland Regional Authority, into the Auckland Regional Council, and finally into the Auckland Council in 2010. And during those years, it's expanded into, I think it's over 27 um, regional parks. The first one that was purchased after the um, Centennial Memorial Park being Wenderholm. The other aspect which is um, spoken about in the report is the Waitaki Rangers Heritage Area Act, which was passed in 2008. And the heritage area is almost entirely in our local board area. And that means that that area and the park within it are considered to be of local, regional and national importance and there isn't any other land area in the Auckland region that has that significance through national legislation. And 80% of the heritage area is regional park. So we're the only local board in this situation. On to the next one. 
The other thing to say what makes us unique is that many of our villages where our communities live are actually within regional parks. So um, some of them are listed there, Piha, Tehinga, Kerry, Kerry, a whole lot, um, are actually surrounded by regional parks. So the people living in those communities do have a strong sense of stewardship of the regional park and make up many of the people who volunteer to do work in the park. And as well as that, they are kind of like their place where they go and recreate, so they, they operate a little as regional par uh, local parks in that sense. Next one. There is something specific I wanted to bring up about the report. I couldn't find listed anywhere the Taitomo block, um, so it's not clear if it's included in the review. That's a 200-acre site between Karakari and Piha purchased by Auckland Council in 2014, and in 2017 a variation was developed for the Taitomo block, but it just... Um, wasn't listed in attachment A, and so I suggest that you clarify with officers that it is included in the plan review. Uh, and the next one. Just want to talk briefly about the process. It's critical that local boards with a strong in interest are consulted early during the formative stages of the plan. I have to say we've had a little bit of a disquiet over recent years because the pattern has been often things have come to our local board when they're kind of beyond changing and we'd like to make sure that this happens differently so we do get the chance to input along um, early and along the way. Um, I'm an example of that is the Curry Dieback Track Plan where we were consulted really late in the piece. It's important that we have a roll right through because local boards with regional parks like us have a great deal of information about the parks and we're strongly linked to our communities and can convey community views. Another thing I think so, wanted to bring up um, that isn't in the report, but I think it is really important that elected members lead the process. Um, it, it talks about having a hearing panel, but we would like to put forward that you make sure that that hearing panel um, has elected members on it. Um, it's important because that gives the chance to for a dialogue between our communities and actual members, elected members of the council, and it's not kind of mediated through officers, but it's a direct conversation because when we had the hearings on the last plan, we actually really worked things through with people who came in and made submissions. So that, for instance, Waikiki people, where there was an issue about horses riding in water, we worked that through and came up with something that everybody was happy with. And that, to me, is the role of the elected members in this process. It's also important that there are public hearings so that there's an open democratic dialogue that goes on that people can attend and hear and anybody can come and speak to. It's not clear at the moment what's intended in this report. I, th I think also by doing it that way, we cement in the ownership of the governing body with the regional parks. And it's always a, an opportunity to find out more about different parts of the region. You know, I found out the people in Parkery and the people in Waiheke were every bit as passionate as the people in the West about their part of the region. Um, and just to sort of impress on you, I don't know whether everybody around the table knows, but there isn't any other regional council or council in New Zealand that has regional parks. It historically came about as a, a replacement for, because we don't have a lot of dock parks in Auckland. So instead of that, the regional authority went about collecting up the uh, landscapes, important cultural um, places with um, the regional parks contain many of the pa sites and important places to Māori. Just wanted to talk about a um, few of the West issues very quickly. Um, we go on to the next one. Uh, yes, I, I'm going to do this really quickly. Um, we're not going to raise a whole lot of West issues now because we know that we're going to get other chances to do that, but we just wanted to mention a few key issues. And one of them is the need to really revisit the Kauri dieback approach to the um, track 
upgrades because of kauri dieback. One of the things that concerned us with what happened with the um, track plan was that it happened in the absence of any vision about what you were trying to achieve for the Waitakere Ranges. And so the track work has kind of led changes in the Waitakere Ranges which are unfortunate and inconsistent with the existing plan. So it's really important that a clear policy direction that takes into account carry dieback is developed for the Waitakere Ranges. Also, that any permanent track closures, closures should be um, addressed through this plan. This is the place to do it. Visitor pressures. Visitation to the Waitakere Ranges has been steadily increasing, and 80 kind of periodically tells us what the numbers are. A single track, Kitty Kitty Falls, has 161 people on it annually. The majority of people that come to the Waitakere Ranges are day trippers, the majority from Auckland. And of course, the bigger Auckland grows, the closer we are, and we're going to get more. AT data showed that of all the Auckland Council wards, we have the greatest number of visitors. And already some places are being heart the visitor experience, which is the key thing in the management plan, was to determine what the visitor experience would be and how you were going to protect it, already being harmed in some parts of the Waitakere Ranges because of the scale of visitors. So. We also want to, it was an innovation to put into the last plan that the ranger service was a critical element in the parks net, regional parks network that's cemented in through the management plan. The rangers are highly valued by our coastal and rural communities. Um, to some extent that service has been contracting direction of Auckland Council and in fact we need to look again at our range of service and how we make it the really key part of the Auckland Council that it should be. In conclusion, we wish to be involved in a meaningful way from beginning to end of the process. We recognise that the governance rise with people around this table, but for many residents in our area, what happens in regional parks is critical to their wellbeing. So I think I've just set out a case for why we want to be really in, involved and also that we can contribute a lot and help make sure, sure that the process is um, works for everybody and that we end up with a great plan at the end of it. Thank you, Mr Chair. Kia ora, Sandra. And look, can, can I just acknowledge the work that ARC and yourself did um, with the original plan? And um, I have no doubt at all that the local boards are going to be key. Uh, we have spoken to the staff around that, and it is at the beginning of uh, this process. So it's definitely local boards, our community are going to be key in regards to that. And 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 one of the things that um, that uh, our team has spoken about is sending an invitation to the workshop, um, where we can discuss how um, our our local boards want to be involved in and everything else. So look, uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to open up some questions. I know we had the time that's in there, but that's a guide for us. So, look, I'm going to open up to see if there's any questions, and then um, there would be... Yeah, I've got two here so far, so I'll, I'll, I'll stay with the two, and then um, I'll put the recommendation just to thank um, uh, yourselves and the local board and the chair. Yeah, and, and that'll be seconded by Councillor Cooper. So I'll go to Councillor Walker and then uh, Councillor Henderson. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I've just got a question around the scope of the management plan and the the context, particularly as it goes to the Waitakere's, is you've got the heritage area, which is much larger than the actual park. So quite obviously there are values that go to the park that are around the park and it may well be over time that it's desirable to enlarge the park, and that could be for a whole variety of, um, of, of reasons. And for example, those reasons could be cultural, they could be around water supply, they could be around our urban forest strategy. They could in particular be around climate change adaptation and mitigation, which is identified in this uh, report. And quite obviously, they could be around uh, recreational planning. And obviously, 
they would also be around calorie dieback because that is having a huge impact around representative um, ecosystems. So I'd just invite you to respond to the issue around scope as it goes to um, area, particularly as it goes to the Waitaka area. Thank you. Do you want to answer that? Okay. I think at the moment you will find that the Heritage Area Act um, objectives are really congruent with the Regional Park Management Plan. Um, the Act had passed by the time we actually worked on the management plan. And also the Unitary Plan has had a chance to um, take in, it, it, the zoning on the private areas around the regional park, although I think some of them have been gone to court, um, have been resolved. And so I think the sticking with the park is important rather than straying into any policies for private land. I think that they're covered by the unitary plan and the two work well together. Thanks, Sandra. Uh, Councillor Henderson, and then we'll put the recommendation. Thanks, Mr Chair. Um, look, through your corridor, you've kind of addressed my points a little bit here, but I want to kind of drill down on it because I know how important it is to the West. So despite, of course, being mainly regional park, do you feel like your local board is sufficiently involved in oversight of the Kauri dieback program specifically? Uh, it's certainly a changing world, isn't it? Um, we, we're certainly involved in the formulation of the, the work program. Um, we've been getting information recently about how that's changing, and it's changing quite dramatically. We, very keen to be involved in those decisions as early as possible, and uh, we'd love to be involved earlier than what we are right now. The, can I just say one thing? I think there's a lot of disquiet about the approach being taken to um, upgrade the tracks, and that it's more radical than, for instance, DOC is following. And I, for instance, a very small number of kauri on a track can result in the entire length of the track being upgraded. And that's when I said the track work is leading the policy because it's leading to what I call a sanitising, I'm not sure that it's the board's word, but it's my word, of the tracks that is not, I know, it is not what people wanted when they came and talked to us through the management plan process. They wanted actually a variety of standards of park uh, tracks and they wanted some tracks to be very challenging and, and, and rough. And um, so I see that as a really big subject that should be grappled with through this management plan process to try and make sure that the two things are working together. Well, thanks. Very helpful. Thank you. Well, just again, um, just to acknowledge uh, uh, the local board and the advocacy in regards to this regional parks management plan. So I'm going to move. It's been moved and uh, seconded. So I'm going to put it, all those in favour, against, carried. Again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, councillors. Yeah, it's our first know. meeting in person for quite some time. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Which is why I forgot my notes. <laughs> so look, I'm going to uh, welcome uh, the Hibiscus Coast, the Chair. Where are you? Gary. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, 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 just, I'll just do the intro first and I'll yes. come back to you. Just so, that. Well, I, 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 I think it's important to introduce him first. I just want him to sit down before anything happens. So I just want to acknowledge <laughs> you, you, Gary, and, and, and let you here. sit down. Exactly. You. Just to let you sit down. So, look, I, 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 I just... Firstly, just want to say thank you for the, the corridor we had yesterday yeah, absolutely. And, and also the pathway that, that you now have in regards to uh, the Hibiscus uh, Coast, the Youth Centre. So look, I just, just want to acknowledge that at least there's a pathway in regards to that. I, I also... Um, also mention uh, the, the, the money that was granted uh, on the 22nd of May 2019 um, under the uh, Finance and Performance Committee and then again confirmed and ratified by uh, the governing body straight after. Mm. Um, so a, as you know, Gary, <coughs> this, this particular one is around our regional youth centres and, and if you could sort of do the comments around that. I, I know that the Hibiscus Coast, the youth centre is mentioned in here. Um, so look, I, I just um, 
sort of let, let you know that. Um, Councillor Walker. I just wanted to make the suggestion that it would be more appropriate to have Gary speak immediately prior to the item rather than now. Um, so that we, uh, unless Gary's pressed for time, it's... it's well, I, I, I end up for, for us, I mean, look, there's only going to be two, there's only one item before that. Um, but, but Gary, that's up to you. I Look, for, for me, it was just to sort of, at least let all of us know, um, we'll give you five minutes yep. and, and, and then uh, the opportunity for <coughs> questions. So again, thank you so much. Go. Hey, look, um, it was great chatting to you, Alpha. We hadn't met before. It was it was wonderful. And, and welcome, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for having me here. Um, it is based around the regional, um, the youth centres that are in the area. But of course, being from the local board from Hibiscus and Bays, it's 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 appropriate to talk about where we are at this stage. Um, Mayor Goff, I think you've had a, a good chat to the previous chair and they came and saw you and, and you were very kind in, in helping previously. Um, but what I want to just basically, I understand that the youth is, is, is very important, especially I think after COVID-19, you'll find that a lot of families are under due, due stress and, and um, duress with everything that's going on. The kids are, are, are aren't coping well, the parents aren't coping well, and I think the youth centre has become a bit of a sanctuary for, for all of them to go to and, and understand. And what's happening in our area with our, our youth centre, it's growing so rapidly um, from a comparison of a couple of years to 300 kids coming through a week to nearly 1,000 kids a week coming through now. Our facilities haven't changed, they are still the same. I have with me um, Suzanne Booth, the manager of um, Hibis Coast Youth Centre with me. Um, I want to thank you for preparing the report. It was really good. It was um, great to go through. I just have a, a couple of points I want to, now that I'm, I can't be too directive on Hobus's Coast, it's changed my notes a little bit. Alpha, <laughs> hope you don't mind. Um, speaking to the agenda, look, we note that the brief was for review of support for the youth centres, but did not include the assessment of the merits of the Hobus Coast Youth Centre. Um, we are not out of scope. We are part of this whole regional use scene. Um, and the report says, does say in point 44 um, is that the use centre was awarded one-off grants administered by the service um, agreements in 2018, 2019, 2019, 1920, but is not currently a council in-service facility. Um, there's no ongoing agreement for um, helping the, the community out, the facilities out. Um, and that is a concern to our local board. We've talked about this many times, and we do have a concern that our, our community youth centre will not um, survive, per se. Um, we own, the, the community, uh, the youth centre owns the actual facilities. The council owns the, prop, the property, um, but we own the buildings. Uh, they own the buildings, and they have to maintain, they have to do the operation, they have to do all the, the, um, all the facilities that... that they need to keep it going, they pay for themselves with no assistance. Um, and so it's important that um, we state our case that we need that support. Um, in point 47 and 48, it mentions that the distribution of youth centres and facilities, we would suggest that the Hypersis Coast and adjoining Rodney and Upper Harbour local boards, which is because we have children that come from west, they come from, we've got nothing up until Walkworth, uh, down to Devonport, out west to um, Helensville. There's no youth facilities. So you can see who we actually accommodate in this area. And they do come for their different programs during the holidays and after school um, in, the, in the local areas. Um, we do appreciate the Hope Coast Leisure Centre at Stanwell Bay is there as well, and there are facilities there, but it doesn't concentrate on the youth. It concentrates on, a, on a, a wide demographics of the elderly as well as um, the, the mothers and stuff like that. Um, we do not comment on the situation of other local boards. We suggest that the Harbour Coast, Coast Centre does require funding, um, does not have a level of funding that is comparable sized to the other youth centres that are, are adequately funded right throughout the Auckland City Council. Um, we believe that if this is not addressed, then the significant funding gap in our part of the uh, region it will fall through. Um, we suggest that, 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 that our facilities actually fill that gap that I just talked about, that, uh, those areas. Um, 
And we noted that in item 70 that the council and local boards have the ability to support youth centres, facilities and services. Um, if this is a priority in that area. We believe this is a major priority. Look, I've, I've been on the Hypersis Coast for 50 years this year, even though I'm only 28. Um, I like to think I'm only 28. Um, but to be honest, um, I've, I knew the person who built the, the youth centre from scratch, um, Mr Keith Morris. Um, the family still lives in the area and he wanted this to survive um, and we want to ensure that that continues. Um, before, I'd just like to make a, a request for a recommendation, if that's okay, um, and then I'll ask Suzanne Booth if she would just say a couple of words. Um, the re recommendations be changed so that the, uh, A, the, no, the Youth Centre's investigation found that youth are generally well provided for, with a wide range of services and facilities and initiatives being delivered on council sites, including facilities owned and operated by the council or others. Um, we're hoping that this change will um, widen the scope of recognise the youth centres like the Hobbes' Coast and the Centre, uh, which are owned by the um, youth centre. So so Gary, if you could uh, wrap up in regards to, to this part, because I'm going to open up to, to questions. Certainly. Um, quickly, uh, B, um, we'd like to add it. Add maybe um, section B, external youth providers such as Hubbard's Coast Youth Centre will need to receive ongoing funding in order to ensure that they are able to fill what has otherwise been gaps in the youth provision. Um, can I just quickly call up Suzanne just to say a few it, it's, words? It's, it's, um, yeah, look, we, we will, but, but as I said earlier, yep. this is around a regional approach. Yes. Um, yes, it's mentioned in uh, the report, but yep. um, those issues that you have raised particular to the Hibiscus Coast, yes. it is going to be around uh, the recommendation number 12 that was in yes. March of last year. Mm -hmm. um, just to let you know, this, is, this committee is not the committee in regards to putting any recommendations okay. around funding. Um, I've explained where um, we that can go pathway to for that. is, yes. uh, but this is not uh, the committee that would end up doing that. Yes. Um, and I've spoken to not only our finance team, but Councillor Simpson in regards to the pathway we spoke about last night. Mm -hmm. So look, I, I'm, I'm going I to allow um, um, the, the, the hibiscus <laughs> uh, manager there, but, but like I said, I, and I'm doing this out of, of, of our scope that we have in regards to this because it is a regional approach and not on uh, hibiscus. I, I realise that, but yeah. I do, Okay, do. so look, I, I, I will, and, and she, there's a couple of minutes and then I'm going to um, open up for questions, but Council Simpson has, has a question already. So if we just sort of come through, you've got a couple of minutes just to sort of... <laughs> Thank you. Um, just just to sort of say it, I know I'm going outside, but I think it's important that I do. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chair. Sorry, Councillor Sayers, not Simpson. Yeah, no, he, he, he's on Skype. Yeah. So, look, I just get a couple of minutes um, in regards to this, knowing again that it's about a regional approach. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Councillors. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that this is a regional item and also that the Youth Centre here needs to be looked at as part of that region. Um, we do have a very broad reach, which covers from out west right through to the city and also um, north and east. Um, also, I'd like to acknowledge um, Mayor Goff for visiting the centre previously. And I think that that's important um, for anyone here. We'd like to invite you to come and have a look at the vast size of the facility and what it does offer. It's something that we can't explain in, in a few minutes. However, we do have a very broad demographic. We have a 30% Māori, a 20% Pacifica and a very wide multicultural reach which covers from five years old right through to 24 years old, um, including youth development, employment within the region and also we commit to families and action plans to assist families through difficult times, whatever that might be. So I guess the short is that it's a very broad gap that we can fill um, and we have the ability, because of how we operate, to be able to adjust what it is that we do for individual groups or families 
in this area. So I appreciate your time. And I'd just like to say this has been a very difficult time. We are being begged to get back into our operation and we've just started that um, uh, physically because we have been working online through the COVID-19 lockdown period. So I appreciate your time and I appreciate any support or visitation that you may be able to provide. Look, thank you for that. So, so look, um, we've got to open up for questions um, and, and most of the stuff that, that, that you have mentioned may well be captured in the, the, the review um, that, that we actually passed in, in March of 2019. Um, so look, that's, that's really the key thing here. So look, I just want to thank you both. And I've got Councillor Sayers online um, and then I'll go to Councillor Walker. And I've got one, time for one more question before I uh, put the recommendation to say thank you to you both. All right, uh, Alf, thank you. Thank you very much. Am I coming through all right? Yep, no problems, my friend. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, and 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 you know, thank you very much for allowing the opportunity uh, for this presentation. I, I and also I want to acknowledge the mayor and Councillor Simpson, uh, and also the mayor for you actually, you know, having visited this centre. I have visited it many times, and I know the terrific, powerful, good work they do for the youth. My my voice is coming from the Rodney Ward. Um, as, as was indicated by the presenters, um, even though this is based in Arewa, the actual you know, building, it does support my constituents and the youth um, to a significant extent. Not only the rural people, but there's also big developments like Milldale just across the road, uh, which is well within the catchment area. So it is, a, a, Mr Chair, as you said, it is a regional um, uh, you know, kind of uh, scope around this, but it is, it does affect, I know it affects my ward heavily, and it's a very important um, facility that we have, and it's probably saved lives by being there, um, and also, as mentioned, it extends right down and and encapsulating um, the North Shore as well. So the, the, my, my, my message here is just, look, um, um, it is an, it is an interregional asset. Uh, the people that work there are terrific, and it does a lot of good. Um, I just want to send that message uh, through you, Mr. Chair. And I thank you for your endorsement and um, and um, for, for thank, thanking the presenters as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, no, no, no problems at all. And and, and as I said, and, and I'll keep on repeating, it's a regional approach. So uh, that's what we'll be doing. Um, when the item comes up. Councillor Walker, you're the last uh, for a question, Sir, please. So I, I just have a question um, that goes to page 25 of the agenda, point 45. And that um, obviously covers off the Hibiscus Coast Youth Centre together with a, a range of other youth centres that are identified as being um, owned and operated by um, by the council. Now, I would I would guess just based on my um, knowledge of buildings that that could amount to as much as a hundred thousand dollars a year. That is additional funding over and above the funding that's shown in the in the uh, column. Correct. Can you just give us some um, indication of what the costs are both now and into the future around obviously um, your building that quite obviously is not being considered both as a building and an operation on an apples by apples basis in this um, in this table. Certainly, thank you. Um, not having that right in front of me at the moment, I did quickly read through it last night. This, this was a very quick turnaround. Um, the youth centre currently, if we were working at our 800 to 1,000 visitation per week, we are operating that in an operational cost or expense cost at around 380 to $400,000 a year, um, which is a very tight budget. Um, outside of that, we do have a capex and renewal um, program that we would only be able to affect in a fundraising sense, that one of those was uh, depleted through the COVID-19 where we were looking at raising about $15,000 to replace a roof. If we looked at immediate um, 
uh, CAPEX or renewal program, we'd probably have about a, a, a $50,000 drop straight away to look at roofs, toilet facilities, etc., and then an ongoing op uh, CAPEX or renewal cost, which, which I can't tell you now. Is that, does that answer your question? Thank you very much. Okay, um, Councillor Watson, and then um, what I'll do is get yourself and Councillor Walker to move uh, and second uh, the recommendation to thank um, both our presenters, and then um, we'll move on from there. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, just a question in terms of that, that kind of um, regional approach that, that's covered in the report here, um, and, and it goes to the goes to page 44 in the list of uh, dedicated council-owned and operated youth centres or facilities, and I understand, Suzanne, what you've said about the, their overall financial commitment. My question is, if, you, if, if in this regional context, I understand there'd be a massive big gap, we've heard that from Councillor Sayers, and we, we know that ourselves, if, if your facility uh, falls over, what is the arrangement by, by what happens to the property? Who, what happens as a consequence of that and the costs that go with it? Thank you. The current lease um, states that, firstly, under the current operation, that the youth centre must open to the public for um, toilet facility provision um, and will receive no support for that either through maintenance or operational costs, cleaning, etc. If the the second part of that is if the youth centre became insolvent or continue, did not continue to operate, then there is a clause within the lease that explains that the youth centre would be handed back to the Auckland Council or local board and they would need to take that over and provide only a youth service, none of the items or um, facility or uh, uh, asset <coughs> items would be able to be sold for any other reason or used for any other reason except for youth. So in short, the council would need to come and take that facility over and operate it as a youth centre. Thank you. Okay, look, I just want to put that the recommendation has been moved and seconded, and I'm going to put it all those in favour uh, against carried. Um, thank you to you both. Yeah, um, but thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Gary, that the pathway is there in regards yep. to this. I'll be taking it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, which is a good thing. Thank we'll you so much. See you guys again. Thank you very much.